We're dreaming big. What's your dream? What's your big dream? And how can we create our dreams? Do you know that your dream is often a seed in your soul from the moment you were born? How do we open up to our full potential? And how can we realize the dreams of our heart? The universe wants us to think big. They don't want us to minimize the outcome. And often as humans, we don't give ourselves the power of the full potential of what we can accomplish, how we can create in this world, and what dreaming is. You know, there's a song. I love this song. I like dreaming because dreaming can make you mine. So I like dreaming. I like visualizing. I like seeing things in the energy as I really, 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 really want them to be. Anyone who's ever participated in a competition or sports, sometimes we've visualized ourselves winning that challenge or that competition. We've seen ourselves the winner of the story. A lot of people spend time visualizing and feeling the feeling of what they're meant to be and how they're driving themselves from the inner core of their being to the outcome. So when you were growing up, what was your dream? What was your vision? And how can we shift your day-to-day visions now so that you can dream big and think of a big dream? Perhaps the dream of your childhood is not where you see yourself now. Perhaps that's not what you any longer desire. Whatever that story may be, at this moment in time, you have the power to dream big and not look at the limitations of maybe where we are in this juncture of life. Have you seen yourself accomplishing something new, visualizing your own company? I was blessed today to speak to someone about her artistry and her vision to have her own art school. It was a magnificent conversation. And she knows she's destined for more than what she's currently doing. And although what she's doing is great, and in the physical working vision, she has a plan of some next steps. But the ultimate dream is to have her art school. The ultimate dream is to be a visualizer of her visions that are in her dream, like to see that visualizations coming to manifestation. This is her purpose. She's the visualizer, seeing, feeling, tasting, imagining, envisioning everything as it could be. But a lot of times we don't give ourselves permission to do that. We don't see ourselves as someone who could do that, or we don't know how we're going to get there. But do you remember when you were little? Do you remember, you know, when you were young and you're like, I'm a big kid now, right? And you were thinking you were big, but you might not really have been big. But you went to your parents and you said, I'm going to be a ballerina or I'm going to be a fireman. I'm going to be a policeman. I'm going to be a football player. I'm going to be a nurse. I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to be a veterinarian. I'm going to love all the animals in the world. We had such innocent, pure visions. So what the heck happened? What happened to those visions and those dreams, the way we felt them? We didn't know it was impossible at age five to be a veterinarian in just a few years, but we saw ourselves there. We didn't know it wasn't possible to do something that we weren't maybe slighted for in life. That wasn't what was coming our way. You know, imagine the little girl who said, I want to be a football player. That was not something that she could do. And I'm sure there was a little girl who had a dream to be a football player. And now, you know, these things do happen. We, we do have people breaking through the norm of how things have been in life. But when you get to the certain place in your life where you can step into your dreams, that's when we need to take action. At that point, there are times that life has weighed you down and given you this sense, this feeling of, well, how do I work that? Maybe it's not possible. I don't have the funds for that. 
I need to sustain where I'm at. I, I don't know. And the I don't know is the voice of the world that has kind of taken down the light of the dream. And your guides, your angels, our divine creator, they want you to step into your greatness. There are no reasons why you cannot, except for what you tell yourself. The self-talk in this journey of dreaming big is so important. It is a strong force in what you create. It is the words that you say that can disempower your own individual self. And how we see ourselves. Do you see yourself as a success? Do you carry yourself a certain way? Do you hold your energy high? Do you praise yourself? Do you believe? I also today had a great conversation, a great session with a young man in New York, and he's on the journey of being a pharmacist. And it's a spectacular journey. And he has a vision of what he wants to create next. Working with someone and then having his own pharmacy, he's got a vision. And in the journey, at the end of each journey in pharmacy, we have to take a test. So there's apparently two tests that we have to take. So when I first connected with him, that test wasn't connecting for him. He wasn't feeling like he could do it. He was scattered. He wasn't centered. But yet he knew he wanted to be a pharmacist and he was giving it his all. But somewhere inside, I don't know, I, I feel like he didn't believe it was possible for him. There was a negative self-talk or a negative vibe that wasn't quite allowing him to center and concentrate and pass that test. Well, yay, he passed the test. And then there's a, another test that he has to take. And so now we're in the preparation of that test. And that test is really about the art of taking a test. It's about words and laws governing pharmacy. And so there's a hesitation there. And what is the hesitation? that in the past, he didn't pass it. So now he's coming into this test with a little fear and angst. So where should our attention be? On the fear or the angst? Or do we focus our energy on the power and the passion to be a pharmacist? And the bigger picture, to have our own pharmacy. And the power of it's possible for him. And that he can do it. But it's that wobble that we go through that sets us back, that disrupts us. And every day I hear these stories of how we all have ourselves in this place of uncomfortability, uncertainty. We don't know if we can accomplish it, but we want to and we'll give it a try. It's the if I can and the I hope so that deflate the dream because the soul knows I know so, but the mind says I hope so and I think so. So we need to learn to drop down into the soul. We need to learn to feel what the soul is prompting us to do. It's the person who wanted to be a salsa dancer and she was graduating college, biomedical engineer, amazing young woman. And even though she landed a job, that was a big job, the guidance from the universe was, don't take the job, follow your passion. And then I quickly said, but please don't tell your father. I said, don't take the job, because I was like, her father is not gonna be happy with this one. Well, she didn't take the job, and the job actually was based in Puerto Rico. And that was right before Hurricane Maria hit. 
So she would have just started her job only to not have had a job. So here we are thinking spirit is guiding us because the goal is only to just be what we desire to be a dancer. But spirit looked beyond the whole scenario and knew that it wasn't going to work out anyway. So you might as well go follow your dream. And so she did. And even with the pandemic, even with everything that's happened, she started before all that, but she's teaching and she's dancing and she's performing and she's touring and her dance partner is her partner in life and life is moving. She's in the rhythm of her life. Where are you not in rhythm in your life? Where are you not feeling what you need to feel to dream big and think big and be one with the universe? That great sky out there is so vast. And the capacity of this world to support your dream is great, vast. There are infinite possibilities as to how your dream can play out. Sometimes the universe has a better version of your dream. That's why I said we tend to sell ourselves short. We tend to limit ourselves, minimize the vision because we think that there are other things that have to happen so we don't make it easy to get there. And we complicate things. As humans, we're complicated. When I watch the birds on the bird feeder, they're not complicated. When I watch them gradually leap from the bird feeder and go to the branch, they're not complicated. When I see the butterfly just land on the flowers and just dance around the leaves, it's not complicated. Now we know that that butterfly, it's not the sturdiest of insects. It's very delicate. Leave that to a human. If we were flying around like butterflies, you know what our human mind would say? Oh my God, I'm so delicate. Nobody touched me. Oh my goodness. Kind of like what we've been through for the past two years, right? Just, oh. The butterfly is careless, carefree, doesn't really care about what's going on. It's just living in the moment. Now, the butterfly's dreams are present in the moment. We're trained to dream by thinking big and looking to the goal and then taking the steps to get there. Well, the butterfly in the chrysalis, in the energy of its death and rebirth and the breaking down to from the caterpillar to liquid to turn into the butterfly. That's its process to get to its ultimate goal in life to be the butterfly. So we have a process for us as humans as well. It's a breaking down of our old conditions, beliefs. It's a breaking down of things that need to be accomplished and a methodology to get there. Well, the universe has the outcome as magnificently, beautifully orchestrated and a tapestry of color that is rich and vibrant as a butterfly. Our dreams are that big. They are colorful and aware and fully present in a moment and has a beauty that is remarkable. It has a feeling to it. But we rob ourselves of the feeling because we worry as to how it'll happen or how we'll get there. And dreaming big doesn't mean that our dream has to be big to the world. <laughs> I certainly know. Dreaming big is making things feel amazing for you. And for someone just Having a simple side business is a dream come true. For someone else, fame and notoriety or financial abundance that's millionaire status is a big dream for them. For another, it's to feel the same harmony and flow and beauty in their life in an action and a career in a occupation that brings them the same joy as the butterfly or the bird when they're just 
carefree in the energy of the flight. You see, we all have our own version of what a big dream is. For some of us, that big dream from childhood to adulthood, it morphs. It shifts and it changes in a way that is the better version when we allow it. I myself had a dream. My dream was to be on Broadway, to perform, to sing. I still get to do that. I'm not on Broadway, at least not now, but that was the dream. But there were aspects of that dream that still put me in front of a camera, still put me in front of a microphone, still bring me in front of people. And you may say, well, why did you want to be on Broadway? Well, besides loving to sing and I love to connect with the audience. Yes, I had done things in television and it was fun, but there's a disconnect to me because I couldn't feel the people's energy. I wasn't in their energy expressing my energy and feeling the connection I was making for them through my music. That's why I always loved live performances. I always loved being in front of a big audience or just back in the day picking up my guitar and singing a song to a group of people wherever we were. You could always count on me to break out into song, right? But there was this sense of connection. Your dream represents a connection, a connection to the soul of who you are and a connection to a action, an activity, an actuality, a realization in the physical world. But we have to come from within. So isn't it funny how life took my little girl dream and put me on a different platform? Still live, still connecting. And whenever possible, we are live in person. We've done many things. And I get to do all of the above. I don't have to worry about a cast or a director. I got a producer, but I don't have to worry about all that. I just get to be you and I. Just us connecting. Just us feeling the energy. So what's your dream? What's a dream that's in your soul that if you could flip a switch, if fairy godmother were to fly in and say, what can I do for you? What would make your heart sing? What would make your soul activate so powerfully that you could feel the energy from you transfer to the outcome of what you desire? And please don't tell me it's too late or you're too old or whatever story you've got. Okay, maybe you won't be a prima ballerina at a particular age, but there's so many versions of what you love about dance or what you love about sports or what you love about music or what you love about helping people or finances or being a nurse or being a doctor. There's so many facets of that title and that role in your life that you can tap into to be a part of what the dream is, which maybe as a child, you said a doctor or a nurse or a football player or a dancer, because those were the only categories you knew. But how do you know that the universe used what was familiar to you in your little child mind to set your sights and your heart upon a form of your dream? a bucket that represents your dream because a creator knew all along <laughs> that you were going to be in the medical field. You would be in the sports arena. You would be in the musical arena. You would be helping people in the financial world and the list goes on. And maybe it's not the title that you put on your desk that you thought it would be when you were a little one, but the version that was the divine plan is already happened or is in motion and you're just not giving it enough attention. Last week when we closed the show, we talked about man has man's plan, but God's plan is always better. We're going to stick with that when it comes to dreaming big. 